Hello, Schema. Uh, thank you, Louis, for uh, introduction, and Sarah as well. So a little more about me. I help scale our design org from three designers. Not that, not like, phew, not that long ago to 60 uh, designers today. And I use my 20 years of experience to create solutions that are unique and crafted to company needs. And today, I want to show you that design systems can be, or should be sometimes, much more than UI um, components library. Just like our brain in design system pencil is. We make our work more complex so it's simpler for the users of our design system. And at the end of the day, to our customers. In this talk, I will tell you about our experiences uh, while tackling three problems. Uh, how might we connect product and marketing design to create a seamless omnichannel experience? How might we ensure guidelines are alive and developed according to market needs? And finally, how might design systems be the source of innovation? Before we start, a few words to build a context. Brainly is the biggest learning platform worldwide. Uh, we call it multi-product platform, as our customers can use different ways to learn. Uh, but we are still one service with consistent visual language and experience, created mostly for teens but also their parents and educators. We have over 300 millions of users in 35 countries and 11 language versions and communities. So, first question. How can we pr uh, combine product and marketing experience into one omnichannel consistent ex ex customer experience? With teams' total autonomy, products are tending to lose seamless experience. Don't get me wrong, uh, cross-functional autonomous teams with designers embedded in them are great. Uh, Brain is also structured like this, but this setup has its challenges. Like, for example, product touch points or product and marketing channels created like this crazy pizza. Yum, yum. So, uh, why should we care about seamless experiences? What is the value here? You might say usability heuristics, of course, but it's also important beyond the product because 67% of consumers uh, use three or more channels to engage with the business. And omnichannel design consistency is, of course, connected with brand consistency. And guess how uh, it increases the revenue or might increase the revenue? Is it 9, 70, or 33%? Just answer in your head. The answer is up to 33%. So this is wild. Now we are getting somewhere, right? But this is not the end. Seamless, consistent uh, design means also aesthetic design. There is a lot to gain here because of aesthetic usability effect. According to research, aesthetically pleasing design creates a reaction in people's brains. And uh, that leads to personal and positive relationships with a product. It evokes feelings, yes, feelings to a product, <laughs> of affection, loyalty, and patience. And that catalyzes users' uh, creative thinking, problem solving, while interacting with our product, which leads to increase, increase in metrics like user en engagement, retention, or customer satisfaction. OK, so how do we strive to achieve this seamless omnichannel experience in Brainly? What if I told you that design systems can improve consistency and quality of the design across all channels and can be used by entire company, not only product? Typical design systems is unable to do it. Our multidimensional design system, Pencil, allows that as it consists standards, guidelines, libraries, patterns, and so on, not only for product, but also brand, marketing, motion, accessibility, design system processes, automation, and libraries infrastructure. This is, of course, simplified graph. Uh, so let me show you how anatomy of our design system looks like in more details and explain how did we get to that point. So long, long time ago, specifically in 2017, 
uh, we started building a design system uh, with no team in place. Only me and two developers that volunteered to help. I believed product, marketing, and brand under one umbrella is what Brainly needs, as we had no marketing or brand designers, uh, just an old brand book. So the vendors we collaborated, freelancers, needed a guidance from us, not only designers, although the design team was very small at that time. Uh, but product was our priority, as problems in communication between designers and developers resulted in ping-pong uh, during the implementation. Oh, <laughs> I hear you know it. Uh, <laughs> okay, so lack of shared language and aligned libraries was pointed out as a main issue during the workshops I conducted with all designers and developers in the company. So we decided we have to address this. And uh, we started working on the library's infrastructure, which is built with product, brand, and marketing in mind, but also automation that allows developers and designers to speak the same language, which brought one of our engineers to invent HTML SketchUp, a world's first open source tool to export HTML code to Sketch that allowed us export already existing style guide code to sketch components, and then refactor them one by one and export again and again to achieve fully functional design system. It also helps many teams in the world, to our surprise. So we landed on the merging of design and development timeline alongside Airbnb, Webflow, Seek, and Google. <laughs> and uh, we were used by Seek, Yelp, and even Microsoft for a moment, so that was quite shocking. Uh, we needed a process to support the automation. It became a significant part of the process, of the system. But we didn't focus on creating processes for every activity. Um, prioritizing work without, without mercy, being lean, uh, with building design system was a hallmark of our approach to process, but also to documentation of components. We were looking at the ongoing product needs rather than just copying the solutions uh, that other design systems were creating one by one. At that time, we noticed that communication mm, with external vendors who designed for us, as well as design education when it comes to our guidelines, was painful. So we went public with our design system using zero height and it was a great move. We gained the visibility throughout the company, and we even get yearly impact award from brain employees. Thanks to that, leadership trusted us more, and we finally could hire a dedicated developer. At that time, officially, I had only two junior designers in the team, but we collaborated with product teams, as you can see on the picture, uh, and did enough to show impactful work, not only tell about it, from that moment, pitching for next team members was easier. Within a year, our design system was enriched by motion. It cuts through guidelines, components, and templates for product, brand, and marketing. We bet on motion because we believe it's the key when it comes to product for Gen Z, like ours. And fortunately, one of our designers had motion skills, so we were able to show the magic of motion and what it brings to the table. So that was additional boost. Again, showing, not telling, helps get the budget. The things we did when understaffed unlock opportunities to have a stronger team. So in the end, we hired two motion designers. First UX motion designer to lead motion in the product. And here is an intro uh, of our UX motion guidelines to show how we understand them. At Brainly, we believe motion creates a superior user experience. It brings our UI to life while providing our users with valuable feedback. We follow three key UX motion principles that help us showcase the company's character the right way and at the most appropriate time. In short, we believe movements should be rapid, educational, and unique. These principles help us keep lag time from disrupting the user experience. They guide users as they navigate our product and orientate them by displaying relationships between various UI elements. Beyond that, factors like duration, 
easing, effects, transitions, and accessibility come together to make Brainly more dynamic and user-focused. Second motion designer leads animation and videos for marketing-oriented touch points. Did we create the guidelines and intro to them like for UX motion? Of course. So here it is. At Brainly, we care deeply about our users and how we communicate with them. We created this set of rules to keep our voice consistent and to ensure our messaging remains safe and accessible to all. With these guidelines, stories can be crafted to be entertaining, educational, and unique. These principles make our videos fun to watch and easy to grasp while showing our personality and style. This is made possible with presets for easing, transitions, text handling, character animations, and accessibility. All these factors come together to ensure the highest standards and help create stories people will remember. At this point, we also expanded the team with marketing and brand designer, so they can work with more focus on the areas that were only drafted, uh, but bring value and help um, implementing brand changes we did at that time with Red Answer Agency. So well again, Showing, not telling, but also catching the opportunity as it appears, because this brand changes was a very important project to our company. Our UI engineering lead brought so much value to the company that we didn't have problems to hiring more developers to help him improve the style guide, automation, but also accessibility. We are focusing on improving the accessibility of the style guide components and product in general, and on documentation, but we are also improving accessibility by preparing materials like pencil uh, UI kit in Figma. You can download it by scanning this QR code. We are supporting developers, designers, and QAs in everyday work by guidelines, tools like that, and consultations, because accessible components don't equal accessible product. We are also working on inclusivity from brand and marketing perspectives. So for example, recently we created a diverse group of brand heroes uh, with different ethnicities, body types, neurotypes, characters, and background stories. We have inclusivity um, baked in our language re recommendations. We also emphasize inclusivity in uh, photography and illustration guidelines. How do we document? You can see it yourself, uh, as Pencil is partially public at designbrandy.com. We have, of course, product part, section dedicated to marketing, and brand, with product approach to color and textile, so no duplication needed. And of course, this is a living document, and all sections are constantly evolved. And Pencil side is doing quite well, but because since the premiere two years ago, we have steady traffic, and that also tells us that the site is needed. To sum up, what helped us get where we are today? Prioritizing for org needs, being lean, passionate people, showing not telling, going out of the underground, catching the opportunities as they appear, and being persistent. And that might be the foundation of it all and the most important thing. At the end of the part dedicated to anatomy of our design system, I want to show you a glimpse of how brand system changes we did last year cascaded to product and marketing systems.
see you at Design Brandly Con. <laughs> to sum up, a design system should be what it sounds. Any set of design decisions govern across the organization, as Haley Hughes elegantly put it uh, during the last config. And I couldn't agree more. Uh, this brings us to the topic of the governance. How can we ensure design guidelines are alive and developed according to market needs? When it comes to governance, it's easy when you have a small team, but with bigger and hyper-growing organization, with designers in distributed teams, uh, like at Brainly, it's challenging. So yeah, uh, good luck having transparency about market product uh, needs, uh, making org-wide decisions or effective communication without alignment rituals, cross-team collaboration, and decision makers. Design in silos is bad. Design by committee, also bad. How about designing by community with a leader? Someone has to, in the end, decide what we're going to do with those buttons, right? And uh, what is the vision for the interactions and experience in, in the future? What if we have one domain for contributors from distributed teams led by the core design system team? in the Design Center of Excellence. And this is our solution. Design system and foundations domain led from the Design Center of Excellence. Uh, this more official type of federation covers our dimensions in the distributed teams and in the, in the core to have more structured collaboration, system aligned with market needs, top-notch quality of design, transgressing the silos, and be ready for scaling uh, product org and design org even further. We collaborate with designers embedded in various teams across the company according to their specialization. Interestingly, every manager at Brainly can hire a designer directly to their teams. It can be, for example, people and culture team if there is a business need for it. In every area, we have contributors that are bringing market needs perspective to the system and users that collaborate closely with our uh, contributors. In product, our users are CX product designers. In marketing and communication, users are mostly agencies and freelancers. But contributors are also connected to our team through domain management. And so we are Design Center of Excellence and Domain Management for interaction product designers, visual designers, and marketing designers which means being responsible for the quality of their work and professional development in tandem with their direct non-design managers. This is what our team uh, structure looks like in practice. We have highly skilled designers and developers uh, that support more generally skilled members of distributed teams, mostly product teams. We also collaborate closely with each other, of course, while creating guidelines, directions, and aligning initiatives from different areas. And here, our wonderful contributors from different corners of Brainly that collaborate with us, but also with, with each other and users of the design system, working on their team's priorities. But it's not only about the structure of connections. To make it work, we have contribution processes and other domain processes, documentation guidelines, delivery statuses, hirings, levelings, and uh, professional development of designers, as I mentioned before, design system onboardings for all new designers and front-end developers in the company, regular alignment and feedback meetings, running Slack channels uh, dedicated to the areas we have in the system, as well as design system for all for the entire company, and uh, UX research and stakeholders management, Comp company-wide uh, design education, and building relationships with contributors, users, and stakeholders. And this is super important, hence separate slide. How the ideas flow thanks to all that? As we work together, we can propose uh, solutions for product that are in line with what might be the next steps for brand. Like in case of the patterns we designed for profile covers that later refined and developed, landed in brand design system, 
and spread across marketing channels through marketing templates. Or another example, our brand designer was inspired by typical product component label, and she used it for swag designs. The guidelines, the structure, and how we collaborate with distributed designers are not everything. In the design uh, system core team, we also create directions that merge different areas of our domain. For example, recently I have been directing our initiative to join forces uh, of interaction product design, brand design, UX motion, and animation. We called it graphite dust. <laughs> and uh, we created prototypes aimed to inspire designers and stakeholders to push the product experience to the next level. As well, impact metrics like user engagement, retention, and customer satisfaction. I can't show you what we did, as this is not implemented yet and top secret, but I can show you the reactions of designers and developers from our domain. So generally, big fat yes, which makes us very happy and hopeful. <laughs> Why is the domain led by the core and focusing on communication a good idea, if you are not convinced yet? It's proven that companies with more cross-team collaboration achieve greater customer loyalty and higher margins. And some stats. Respondents of recent Sparkbox survey who felt their design uh, systems were successful had established processes and uh, practices in place. So design system onboarding, decision-making, contribution processes, trainings, and uh, ongoing support are the key to success. We are coming to an end of my talk, uh, but I've got one more important question to answer. How can design systems be the source of innovation? What if you create an environment where engineers can collaborate daily not only with product designers, but also with brand, marketing, and motion designers. Innovation is born when art meets science. I think innovation is generally born on the border of different words, like product and marketing, for example, which I was talking about a lot today. But let's go back to our most significant innovation. HTML SketchUp was made uh, from meeting of two words, that's for sure. We were friends. We didn't want to fight. So we wanted to solve the conflict of unbalanced infrastructures. And now we're creating something new as we migrated to Figma, and our HTML SketchUp can't help us anymore. So we are working on a similar solution, but for Figma. Our UI engineering lead and product designer, aka dream designer and developer, <laughs> collaborate to bridge words with a shared, shared language and synced libraries. Our long-term vision is uh, to, behold, eliminate the handoff. <laughs> this is our dream. By using the dreams the other way around uh, and translating Figma to code in our specific, and this is important, specific co code conventions. And this is a sneak peek of how dreams work, from code style guide through dreams to Figma, explained by the maker of dreams. Hi. I'm Mike from Bentley, and I'm going to show you Figma Dreams project to synchronize coded components with Figma library. We use Storybook when creating and documenting components. Figma Dreams, however, can be integrated with any available web tag by using the available CLI tool. We generate the component file and import it directly into Figma. The components provide all the variants and properties available in the code. In addition, we have control over how the component behaves inside the layout to give designers the best experience. Figma Dreams is powered by a robust HTML and CSS parser. You can see how it works during the conversion of the whole page. Talking about the power of automation, how about automated backgrounds for marketing? During the last team gathering, we were working for a few hours on the team of generative systems. And we made 
random pattern generator based on our guidelines and icons that we are using both for product and marketing. You can refresh the icons, change the number of rows and columns, uh, rotate the scene to have a fake 3D. You can change the background so it works, <laughs> looks like Star Wars titles, align it with grid or not, and you can use animation. Or you can randomize it. So there you go. Pure brainy art generated by the computer. Consistent with our visual language, but sometimes looking like a painting you can put on your wall. We believe having fun helps innovation. Einstein brilliantly said, creativity is intelligence having fun. And we agree. So check out our motion designer, developer, manager, and brand designer having fun during another workshop with the experimental sound design topic. No sound. <laughs> So it is not taking the vibrations. <laughs> this is like when something is on fire. Yes, the steam is on fire. <laughs> And finally, a few takeaways. Multidimensional design systems might seem complex, but they create simplicity for the users, uh, for the entire company beyond the product. Balancing autonomy and seamless experience is possible with the right people, processes, and structure built for connection via center of excellences, for example. The system will ensure market uh, needs if it's created by the domain that includes distributed designers close to those needs. Animation and motion are the future. Accessibility and processes are a must. So multidimensionality in design systems is the way forward. Diverse teams inspire each other, learn together, and innovate on the border of their specializations. And remember to have fun. <laughs> and that's all. Whatever. <laughs>